Hello everyone, I am Serenity and for those of you that don't know me, I am a doula, a certified lactation counselor, and also a first time mama. Um, I'm currently 26, almost 27 weeks pregnant and I am very, very passionate about sharing my love of all things like natural living and oils and birth and like all of that sort of stuff. And so um, here I am teaching about oils from womb to earth and all the things that I have learned over the past couple of years, um, as well as the more research I've dug into since becoming pregnant myself. Um, so to dive in, we're going to start with safety because that is a huge number one question when um, talking about oils from womb to earth. So the first things, the first like number one question with oils and pregnancy or just oils in general is, are they safe? So the short answer for that is yes. Um, but you can say that anything is safe or not safe. So for example, you can say, are oranges safe? Well, yeah. But what if oranges were all you ate? What if you squirt orange in your eyes or your ears or, um, would it make a difference if you had an organic orange versus a non-organic orange? So generally, yes, oils are considered safe. However, there are some safety guidelines and everything that should be taken into consideration as well as the quality of oils that you're using, um, which plays a huge factor into if oils are safe or not. So how you use them and the quality of oils um, is a huge factor for deciding whether they are safe. Um, so without further ado, we'll get more into that. Um, so I'm looking down at my notes just so I don't forget anything. So if I'm looking down, that's why. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is quality with essential oils. So I learned very early on that all oils are not created equally. I actually got started with oils whenever I became a doula because I learned about how they could be helpful in labor and delivery. And so I wanted to, that to be a tool in my doula bag. And so I just grabbed some off the grocery store shelf, even though my mom warned me, those are not the same. They're not good oils. Young Living has the best quality. And I was just like, yeah, yeah. Like that just is nothing. Like that they just want to sell them and it really doesn't mean anything. These oils say pure, 100% pure therapeutic grade. So, you know, why would they lie? And so, I learned very quickly that that is not the case because I started using them and realized, oh, like these don't really like do anything. And my mom was having great results um, using them for just like a whole abundance of stuff. But I was like, these just kind of smell good. Like they don't really do anything else. Um, so I learned that all oils are not created equal. The label that says 100% pure or therapeutic grade, yada, 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 does not mean anything. Um, because all an oil, all a company has to do for an oil to be labeled 100% pure or therapeutic grade is um, have at least 5% of the distilled runoff water in the oil bottle, and then they can fill the rest with fragrance, synthetic stuff, whatever they want. They can fill it with whatever they want, coloring, like dyes and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be, it's not 100% pure ther therapeutic grade at all. So, um, I strongly recommend that you, if you are just like not right on board with, um, Young Living's oils is to call other companies. If you're currently using another essential oil, um, from another company, call that company and ask them questions. Can you visit their farms? Can, do they do third party testing? Do they throw out oils that don't meet their standards? Um, ask those types of questions. A fellow Young Living member actually called the most popular 14 essential oil companies. Um, and not one of them with the exception, like the only one um, was Young Living of course, but not one of them could say that you could go visit their farms. Some of them even admitted that they didn't have a farm. So like, where are they getting their oils from? Where are they getting the plants from that to distill the oils? Very confusing. How, um, so anyways, you can't visit any of their farms or anything. Um, a lot of the customer care people did not 
know the answers to any of these questions um, either. So just take caution in that. I think that that speaks for itself. Whereas Young Living, you can go visit their farms and you, they encourage you to. They want you to come see the whole process. They want you to see the um, plants being, the seeds being planted and the plants being hand weeded and the whole distilling process and the whole bottling process and testing process and all of that. They want to teach people about this because it is so important that you're getting quality oils and the quality behind all of this really does matter. Um, if you're not getting the quality, then you're just pouring money down the drain basically because you're not getting the same effects. So um, with that, um, there's a couple other things I wanted to mention is it costs, for example, it costs Young Living $12,000 to hand weed an acre. Whereas other companies, they, they pay $60 for um, pesticides to be sprayed on their acre. And, um, you know, so there's a huge difference there. Uh, $12,000 for $60 to make sure that there's no weeds on the, with the plants. Um, so then even with good farming, the distilling process matters a whole lot too. So, for example, it takes Cypress 24 hours, 24 hours precise and exact to release the full 280 um, chemical constitutes that are in Cypress that benefit us the most. And so if you distill it at 20 hours, you only get 20 constitutes. And if you distill it at 26 hours, you actually get zero constitutes. So um, there's that. And then um, another popular company uses for, for example, an aluminum distillery, which aluminum leaks into everything and it particularly likes to hang out in our bodies and it is found in heavy volumes in like the brains of people that have Alzheimer's and things like that. So not something that you want in your oils and then you're putting it on your body and you're hoping that it is helping your body and supporting your body, but in reality, it's just being filled with aluminum, which is no good. So... There's that. Um, with cheap oils, people get so much less than what they're paying for because these oils have no healing or therapeutic properties and they can actually do more harm than good. So for example, whenever I was using the grocery store oils off the shelf, um, my mom decided to get me a Young Living kit for Christmas. And so I was reading in one of her desk references, oh, cool. I think that peppermint could um, support whenever I have a headache. And so next time I got a headache, I grabbed my Young Living peppermint and I just put some on my temples. And um, it was almost instantly gone. It was like nice and cool. Um, and I was amazed. And then so I was like, well, hmm, let me just like really test this out here. And so next time I got a headache, I grabbed the peppermint oil that I got from the grocery store. And rather than helping and supporting uh, my body, I ended up like getting like, it was like burning pain, like not cooling pain, not, not like the cooling sensation from peppermint, but it was like actually burning. So I had to wash it off and like put coconut oil on my forehead and everything like that to <laughs> just like make it stop. So I learned um, that way that definitely all oils are not created the same and it definitely matters what you're using. So, and that, you know, those types of oils can do more harm than good. And then I say all of this with passion just because I learned the hard way and I really want you guys to be able to see the benefits, the full benefits of essential oils. Um, and so I only recommend Young Living Oils because I don't trust other companies just based on the research that I've done, um, the phone calls with companies asking them questions and everything, and they're not being able to answer. You can't visit their farms um, and all that good stuff. Like it, it just speaks volumes for itself. So um, just general safety tips. Do not put oils in your eyes or ears or like anything like that. Just use a little bit of common sense. Um, and it's always good to dilute and go slow. So whenever you first start using an oil, um, especially if, you're, if it's your first time using a specific oil, you want to dilute that oil. So grab a carrier oil like coconut oil or um, 
olive oil or like really any type of oil like that almond oil um and you'll use that as like what's called a carrier oil and then add a drop or two of the oil that you're wanting to use um and then see how that feels if you ever have any discomfort or burning or anything like that just apply more um apply more carrier oil so that's for like applying topically um and then never like ingest oils that aren't recommended for ingesting and just like common sense things like that um and then be mindful of the oils that you're using especially when pregnant and with babies and kids um using the gentle the most gentle option first so there are tons of oils that help with like one specific thing um however there are going to be more gentle options than like like the more heavier options so let me kind of break that down a little bit for example um for i don't even know how to let's say this compliantly so for whenever i want to boost my immune system i choose to use thieves because thieves is a very like it's just kind of like a just all around oil it's um i've never had any issues with it or whatnot whereas if i needed to like really strongly support my immune system um i could jump to using a mu power which has stronger oils like oregano and stuff in it um that can be more that's more powerful and you don't really need that much power unless you really need to boost your immune system if you catch my drift um so you know just choosing the most gentle option first and then moving on to the stronger options if needed um so there are a few oils that should be avoided for pregnant mamas and babies so for pregnant mamas um you should avoid oils like birch basil calamus cassia cinnamon bark hyssop idaho tansy lavadin which is different than lavender um lavadin might be in grocery store oils or other branded oils they might use lavadin instead of lavender so keep that in mind um rosemary sage tarragon and wintergreen so some of these oils are just really strong oils that you shouldn't need to use during pregnancy um and other oils can actually cause um hormone changes or like cause you to go into labor essentially like i know sage for example is one of the ones that cause causes uterine contractions and so you don't want to be using that um so there's that and then for babies it's good to avoid uh strong oils like eucalyptus basil juniper peppermint hyssop and wintergreen so those are just a few of like the top ones that you probably have on your you might have on your oil shelf um to avoid during pregnancy and with babies um i'll have a full list um somewhere wherever you're watching or listening to this video there'll be a link to the full list that you can reference um if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask and um i will be hopping on to the next video to talk about pregnancy and then the video following that will be labor and then the video following that will be postpartum so follow along for those if you are interested and let me know if you have any questions